Good morning, my creative friends. This is Dr. Minette Riordan, and welcome to Painting in Your PJs with Minette. If this is your first time here, I'm so delighted you're here. We have well over 100 videos related to all kinds of ways to use art as a creative process for personal growth and self-discovery. And the things that I'm really passionate about are helping women really move from midlife crisis to midlife renaissance. I find that so many of my private coaching clients have actually like we're beyond the crisis of transition and change and all the things happening, but we can get caught in this soupy middle place where we are feeling a lack of clarity about who we are or what's next or what's our purpose. And I often turn to art to answer those questions. So in yesterday's live, I made a very, very messy video of this collage and I loved all the pieces and I loved the story that was emerging. And when I looked at it this morning, it just felt like chaos. So I thought I'd share some of my favorite tips this morning for how do we go from what feels like a messy page to something that feels calmer, a little more cohesive and a, a little bit more, I don't wanna say pretty, I think I said pretty in the title, but a page that feels appealing both to our I and to our hearts as well, because for me, art journaling is such a powerful tool for going deeper within us, looking at all the places our inner critic pops up, and starting to just have different converse, types of conversations with ourselves. And what I love about intuitive collage is it really helps us get below the surface of our thinking head and into the core of our being to figure out what is it that our unconscious is really trying to tell us on any given day? So let me go ahead and change my camera here and dive right in with this very, very messy page. Good morning, Leslie. Thanks for being here this morning. And if you're brand new to painting in your PJs with Minette, I encourage you to hit that subscribe button. If you like what I share today, please be sure to hit that like button. We want to encourage other people to continue. And your feedback is invaluable. So likes, comments, all the things really help me know what it is that you want to see more of on this channel. Buen día, Blanca. Bienvenida. So excited to have everyone here with me live. And if you're watching the replay, thank you, thank you, thank you. So as I was looking this morning and I kind of let the page just sit overnight, I didn't think about it very much. And when I woke up and looked at it this morning, it just felt really chaotic. And I knew that there was more to do here. And I also know, you know, this was sort of a, a, a quest for deeper connection to my soul's yearning. And there's these beautiful things that are happening here, right? There's the connection to art, connection to nature, connection to love, a lot of love, a lot of movement, adventure, travel, finding new directions. And one of the most interesting places on the page was this crazy little portal. And I ended up putting the label happy places over the portal because sometimes to find the chaos or find the calm and all of the chaos of what's going on in our lives, we gotta be willing to step through the portal. And that portal might be change, it might be transition, but it can feel tricky and challenging. So the first thing I think as I look at this is that I need to kind of pick a focal point and maybe let go of some of the rest of the page. So one of my first tips for getting past a really messy page like this is to let go. My clients like, you know, this is a really hard part, but you have to let go. I'm gonna take a sip of my coffee and then I'm gonna grab some paint. And this is where we learn to paint over things. I should have put an apron on this morning because I'm wearing a brand new favorite t-shirt. I am just back from a beautiful walk I shared on Instagram and uh, on Facebook Reels, which I don't know if anybody really sees those or not. I don't really understand them. But a, a picture of one of my favorite places on my walk where this water is flowing from underneath a bridge. All right, this does not want to come out. There we go. And uh, this is just white acrylic paint and the swallows nest under the bridge. And I love watching them 
fly out over the water catching bugs to take back and keep the <laughs> you're so funny Leslie to uh, keep the to feed their babies they nest under the bridge and so they're and right now there's so many bugs and mosquitoes they must be having an absolute feast I knew that one thing that needed to go was the text in the background even though I loved putting that text <clears throat> on there excuse me I definitely felt like that text was contributing to the the chaos and there was kind of no breathing room so even just that little bit of white has made a difference and for some reason I'm wanting to brighten up the that's on an older piece of paper it's a little bit yellow good morning Tori welcome welcome what are you going to do on your last day in Estes Park my friend and I'm not loving this piece here it's not really contributing anything to the design it's got some you know edges that are kind of sticking up so what might happen if we just take some of that away and then we bring some more of that white in and then we get a nice little patch of dark painting and shopping woohoo sounds like a fun day so Tori I can't remember if you said that you like bookmaking and I don't know if you have been into the cliffhanger bookstore which is over by the the post office and it's a used bookstore run by the friends of the Estes Park library and they have a little back room where all the books are 25 cents it's amazing I have gotten some amazing books the first time I discovered horizon magazine I uh, found it you know some copies of it there and I'm also feeling like you know maybe these brighter flowers all the other things are kind of old-school otherworldly different colors and these are a little bit of a mis mismatch they made me happy yesterday but today they're not quite doing it for me so again I'm just being willing to let go and I'm wondering if I can even highlight this figure what I did not do here or did I I can't yes I did this all with matte medium so I can always push back some of the paint if there's too much paint or I want to bring things back just with a baby wipe I can push layers back right it's already calming it down it's just settling it down and it feels so much calmer the, the I'm starting to see the story I almost feel like you know these little shadowy figures are interesting I agree about the trees and I don't want the paint get my water here what I don't want is paint in my portal so I'm gonna all right so I'm gonna have some paint in my portal so that might get maybe we'll just see if we can darken that portal up even more really make that shadowy depth stand out I move my light and uh, I'm getting a lot of glare maybe I can just increase the drama of this a little bit because there's definitely something that's both scary and inviting over here in this portal all right what else can we like I want to be able to see these parrots and the images maybe are a little 
conflicting with the other tree over here. And what I'm noticing is I'm going to let go of the parrots. Okay, bye-bye parrots. And sometimes this is all it takes to help us figure out where the next step is, is to let go of some of the, the parts and the pieces to find our way back to the story, right? To find our way back to the story. I don't know how I'm managing to get white paint everywhere. I don't want white paint too. Oh, here's my, found this beautiful heart-shaped rock on my walk this morning and brought that home to add to my altar, or maybe it'll get a little painty. Okay, so it's starting to feel a little bit calmer. I love these little cherubs here. And I kind of like the white, but I want the story to maybe feel a little more cohesive. So I'm wanting to bring some of these maybe interesting older colors back into the the background a little bit and somehow it feels like that you know he's he's on this path and this journey which is you know where I mean we're always on some kind of a journey right but he's definitely on this path and this journey and so I'm feeling like I want to add a path here because this is, again, about connecting to my soul's yearning and what my soul is yearning for, according to this collage, right, is maybe, like, where are my happy places and what am I willing to step through, what di uh, discomfort am I willing to experience in order to find that. And so I'm feeling like he needs to be somehow stepping on to this path which means I'm going to let go of this shadow and I think if I let go of the shadow then it's going to bring these other two figures back a little more. I love the keep falling in love that definitely needs to stay. All right so the story just continues to emerge as I continue to let go. I love still this little kitty face here. Yeah, this all feels pretty good. The blue maybe feels a little bit out of place, but I'm going to leave it for now and maybe start to bring in some color. I might, you know, maybe this tree needs another branch over here. So I love integrating paint and collage kind of into the same piece. So say more, Leslie, about why you think the portal doesn't fit. So the portal feels like it's an important part of the story, but it doesn't stylistically fit, doesn't stylistically fit you know, with the other colors and images that are on there. And at the same time, the insight that I had yesterday was I have to be willing to step through, right, some of that darkness maybe to get to the happy place on the other side. So it felt like an important part of the story, even if it's not necessarily um, as cohesive a part of the, of the design. And all input is welcome, welcome. All input is welcome. All right. So I love this kind of sort of antique sea green here. Let me see if I blew this up a little bit. All right. First layer, you can always make changes later. I think that, you know, that, that portal is, right, it's, it's definitely part, part of the journey. And I love these witnesses, right? We've got Cupid flying towards love. We have the couple watching him, and this Cupid down here is looking at him. Yeah, 
I don't know. I kind of like those creepy eyes. I will think about it. It's interesting because it's a black and white picture, right? You know, it feels like like this is the place where shadow is living right now. And so much of doing this kind of intuitive work is just learning to trust our own process and practices. Just a little bit of a horizon line here, maybe. So it's already feeling calmer, better, totally, Leslie, totally, totally. You know, it's, um, I love the map over here. Yeah, so this feels like a different part of the story, but it's an important part of the story as well for me. Okay, that feels a little bit better. All right, that's starting to feel more like a clear story and a clear path. But again, I have to be willing to trust the process. And what happens if that at the end, you know, none of it works, none of it feels good or clear? Guess what? I can gesso the whole thing. I can, you know, just leave it as it is as a reminder that I want something different next time. Right? There's, you know, nothing that needs to, to happen here that's good or bad. Just scrap a piece of scratch paper here. Interesting. I have notes to myself on the, on the back of this uh, mandala page, which is not going to get finished because I didn't love the direction that I went on that. But I want to just clean my brush off. And I think I'm going to work on maybe filling out this tree a little bit up here and maybe some of these golds, like to just maybe integrate some of these just a little bit more in here. I love there's a line of mountains along the back. So let's see what we can do for a little bit of a tree. Burnt sienna is one of those colors that makes me happy, and it was definitely one of Van Gogh's favorite colors, or maybe it's a little bit of a, you know, red oxide in there. Definitely need, where's my awesome, some Naples yellow. So my mom cleaned out her art studio this weekend. Good morning, Barbara. Good morning, good morning. And because um, she's not able to go down there and, and work anymore. So, you know, I got to be on the receiving end of more paint and pastels and all kinds of fun things. All right, so Barbara, what we're working on today is how do we go from, you know, a page where we're kind of just stuck in the in the messy middle, this brush is a little too big for this, uh, where maybe we're just kind of stuck in the messy middle and we don't know where to go next. And what I shared was we had to be willing to let go of the attachment to elements or places on the page. So in my case, that meant going in with white paint and painting out a lot of the background to bring back, make some of the other elements feel more clear and connected. And so now I'm just filling in some of those painty spaces I painted out with some different elements and I think that the key to getting through the messy middle of a piece is to let go of attachment to any one part of the piece. 
any one part of the piece. And how fun to kind of look at this Van Gogh image here and sort of use some of his colors. Paint out that little bit of blob of green I got there. All right, already it's starting to feel like the, you know, the piece is coming together in nicer ways. And so when you're looking at a messy page like this, sometimes it's great to just look at it and go, what's the central focus, right? What's the key element that I want to build the rest of the story around? And for me, that was definitely this artist figure here in the center. And I got some white paint on there that's bugging me. We'll just paint it out with something else. And so that's one of the one of the things that I'm thinking about, right? As I'm, you know, painting is if this is the the central image, what's the story that's being told here, right? And it helps me also make decisions about different elements to hold on to, what to let go of. I'm just going to add a few of these little leaves. I'm not trying to imitate, right, completely the, the story here, but just make it look a little bit. Must be fall because all the, there aren't a lot of leaves and they're sort of in that goldy color. I don't want to lose the elements of my compass there, right? So again, just, you know, a little bit at a time, where can I add just little bits and pieces to the journey to sort of continue the story and integrate the collage elements into the overall whole. So I think, you know, that's another thing when we're working with intuitive collage like, don't be afraid to take someone else's image and alter it, right? Make it your own. Start with it as a starting place and sort of, you know, let it grow. Barbara says that's hard. Now with experience, um, I know it works and I have to trust the process and focus on inspiration. Yeah, and again, it's the central image. And because this is an intuitive piece, there's a story here to tell, right? So I'm, I'm not, uh, let's see, I'm not trying to make a masterpiece here. I'm trying to tell a story. And so, you know, think about that when you're, think about your intentions for creating a piece, right? Like, are you trying to create something beautiful or are you simply trying to create something meaningful? Sometimes those can be the same thing, but sometimes they're different, right? Sometimes they're different. A little too much in there. and just start to notice the difference for yourself, right? These little bits of hills in the background. All right, that is a gorgeous blue. That was a happy accident to get the sort of ripe blue to get our cherub sort of blended into the background here. And it also makes this piece up here feel more integrated. And this is hanging off the page. It's going to get trimmed off when I'm done, so I'm not worrying too much about that top edge up there because it's hanging over the edge of the page. 
and I'm in no rush to trim it at the right this very second. It's funny that paper feels different. Like it's very dry. It probably doesn't have matte medium all over it, so it feels like it's absorbing. So that sunshine is going to want some more yellow up there for sure. And I got one little line of green here. So again, you can see that I picked the, the central image of Van Gogh here just as my starting place. I added a path to get the sense about, you know, where is he? On the where's this person on the on the journey and all the different pieces here are telling a story, right? They're telling me a story, and I won't be here tomorrow. I have to go back to the dentist because they didn't quite. These treats need some green. Uh, grind down one of the the new fillings, so I won't be here tomorrow. But I will be back on Friday this week and I want to talk about how to interpret a collage like this to really get to the, the the meaning of that collage. So it'll be a little bit different kind of video, but um, I think it'll be valuable to show what are the next steps, right? What are the next steps that I take? All right. Let's get him on his path. And I'm painting very loose and messy, right? Again, I'm not being too specific and particular about any of the pieces. Not holding on too tightly to anything. Color on the shoes. Bring back that artist case there a little bit. That feels a little bit better. So this one feels like it's at a really good place to pause again, let it completely dry, and then look again, right? So it may or may not be done, but there, I think we also when we have a, a page where we're sort of stuck in that messy middle, we have to look at it and consider where am I getting attached? What's the story that's unfolding? And sometimes the biggest gift we can give ourselves is just to walk away. So from an artistic eye, you know, I have a lot of dark here and some dark here that's really pulling the eye. And I might want to darken up these wings a little bit. He's a little bit dark, but so that, you know, we have maybe a little, this one's not as dark as this one. So I'm just noticing where does my eye go on the page? Right now it goes here because this is this dark place. And if I want it to go here, I, he is walking through a cemetery and the portal is a headstone. <laughs> I love it. I love cemeteries. They are fascinating places. And I'm, you know, and as I'm looking at this now, you know, it's like I'm feeling attached to this. What happens if I do cover up this corner and bring in more of that bright green, you know, leaving the, the chair of what else is possible? Right? And maybe I don't want to lose all of that. So, okay, Leslie, let's see what happens. And uh, I know what's underneath there. And sometimes that's what's important is, the, is those layers, right? So what if we do let go of this part? And bringing a little bit of that green. I don't want to lose this map over here. Then maybe my story is going to flow just a little bit better. I can still see the face through there, which I love, so I'm loving the transparency of that. <laughs> awesome. I love it. You didn't know what you were going to work on, but the playing and the nonsense of it was so fun and relaxing. And that's where I was yesterday, was in that 
sort of play and the, the nonsense of all of it. I would never shoot the messenger. I love you too, Leslie. All right, so he's got a little bit of this texture over here. Okay, so I can feel that I'm starting to get sort of fussy and fiddly with it, and it's time to walk away, but all of a sudden this feels like a better story, right? It feels like I know where it's going, I know what's happening, still maybe not quite sure what's going on over here. Exactly, it's the journey that is the meaningful part. Um, I love integrating and pulling the, the bits of these collage pieces more onto the page, and I'm almost wondering if that is maybe going to end up happening a little bit over here as well. And so I'm looking at it on the screen instead of on the, on the page, which I like because then I can see things. And what I'm seeing is the, the cat feels like he's just sort of hanging out there. So even just pausing for a few minutes and getting a little distance, like the cat needs to be part of the whole tree, right? So he was feeling way too separate over here. So we're just going to extend our tree a little bit bigger, and then all of a sudden it looks like he's sort of just, you know, sitting in a branch of the tree instead of hanging out there all by himself. And so that helps him feel a little bit more integrated as well. And I just love him. And maybe we'll just have these kind of feel like so. Okay, so now the cat feels like he's part of the whole journey. I still feel like these witnesses here on his path are important, so part of the story. So I'm going to leave them alone. I love that I can still see the face, but we have sort of toned that down a little bit. And I'm going to bring sort of the leafy bits all the way over here. So I'm holding my brush super, super lightly. And just letting the brush make some sort of abstract leafy bits on there. And then all of a sudden the kitty just feels like he's part of the story and not hanging out over there. Okay, so that feels way better. And we can also just extend these a little bit to make, so all I'm seeing is the people and not the extra keeper. Okay, so now he feels like he's in this little sweet bower of leaves. Things are feeling much clearer. There's definitely an invitation to the path. So that one feels really, really good. And I brought over another one this morning as well. So my friend Lainey came over yesterday and we ended up playing with some gel printing and then using that gel printing to just do some collage backgrounds. And I had that same sense that I did with the other one of where am I going next with this? So love this little figure of this child here. So definitely these next few pages in this journal are gonna be some inner child pages. I'm thinking that this page over here is going to be this figure, but I love both of these, so I need to make some some copies of, of that one. But this one was collage and then a little bit of paint marking. I'm wanting to, again, we have this sense of this portal and doorway or this sense that she's sort of 
peeking around a corner and that she's on this sort of uh, journey. But I'm looking at this going, where do I go next with this? So again, I could go all white on this page. But when I looked at it, I thought what it needs is some black. So let me find some black here. And let me see if I can find a makeup sponge in the crazy. Like I keep cleaning up and then, you know, things get all messed up and I can't find anything again. Okay. So we've got some nice Mars black here, courtesy of my mom's studio. It's fun to have these really heavy body acrylics to play with, but they're definitely, definitely very different than what I normally work with. So if you have heavy body acrylics, you can always just water them down with a little bit of water. And it felt like this, um, this page, again, it just needed some, some black, some texture. And I brought over a whole bunch. I've got some stamps and some stencils. This one was going to go on this page over here. All right, so I guess we're going to go with this one. I had brought some dots, but it just seemed like this page needed some contrast. I'm going to get my makeup sponge just a little bit wet because this black paint is probably too thick for stamping, but we're going to try it and see. Makeup sponges don't love getting lots of water on them. They tend to, to swell up. And this feels like kind of a big, bold print for this. But again, it's this journey of discovery. So we're just going to go for it and see what happens. Interesting. OK, so that paint was not wet enough on here. But it's getting a little bit of that black. And you can see even just a little bit of black. It is, it is, I actually love cleaning up and I love making the mess. Good morning, Yvonne. Great to see you here. And I'm wondering if I just add some water to this, if we can just loosen up some of that paint on here a little bit. So in the last collage that we looked at, I started by adding white. So in this one, I'm starting by adding black just to come up with that little bit of contrast. And I kind of love with the watery effect of that. You can see where it didn't take all the paint off. It took some of the paint off. So that was kind of an interesting effect on there. But all of a sudden, the piece has a lot more interest by adding the white or the black. And again, this is my, my central, central figure here. And as I'm looking at it now, interestingly, okay, wasn't where I was thinking of going at all. What I'm feeling like is that this all needs to get painted out. She's going to get painted into a portal. And then the rest of it needs to get like hand-drawn elements, like almost like a secret garden image, like she's peeking out of here into something sort of wild and growing is, is kind of the, the sense that I'm having. I have all this now black on this sponge. Okay, so I'm going to hit this with the dryer, and then I'm going to come in with the white and white out everything and just see what happens. Or do I want it to be white? Hmm, I might come over the whole thing with some blue as a background for where I want to go next. So I'm going to think about that while I get this dry, drink my coffee that I let get cold. But the key here is that just by making that one next mark, in this case, adding the black, I was able to get more clarity about where to go next with the whole piece.
All right, so the heavy body paint was definitely not the, the best for using for stamping. It goes on there thicker than I wanted, and it's really hard to get dry. You can see this one up here had a lot of water in it. All right, we're going to get it mostly dry, and I'm looking at the, the color of this little image and the color of my palette. So th these all, I think, came from the same magazine, which had, you know, some of these older images. And so the, the pigments in this one are interestingly the same as they were in the other one. Some of this, you know, beautiful sienna here. And for me, portals, you know, are, they can be hiding places, they can be opportunities to step through what's next, and clearly portals are what are on the mind right now. And I don't want to lose all of the beautiful background that I have created with the collage elements. And this one, I realize we did all of this with glue stick yesterday. So this one doesn't have matte medium on it. So the, the textures are different. It's just interesting, not good or bad. So I want to work with a fairly transparent layer of paint, maybe even water my paint down a little bit so that as I add the color, the wash of color, you can see I start to bring this cohesiveness to the page without losing all that yummy texture, all of those yummy colors, like even the movement of the brush in the arch direction feels good, right? So sometimes just noticing what does your arm want to do? What does your hand want to do? What are you feeling drawn towards? So i paying attention to every aspect of the creative process, the color, the imagery, the texture, the layers, the movements. And so again, I won't be here live tomorrow, Thursday, which I think is June 29th. I've got to pop into the dentist again quickly. All right, now I'm thinking I'm going to bring this nice fresh and blue back, but I will come in on Friday instead. Again, this is one of those super heavy body colors. Fresh and blue has been a, a favorite lately. I'm glad you approve, Leslie. Thank you. Me too. I always love the wash. It's kind of like redactive painting. concept, right, of, you know, putting all the layers on the background and then, you know, washing away certain parts. And I'm liking this is a, you know, a little bit different palette for me. And so I'm using a, a Titan buff here instead of a white, which makes for just a different different way of toning down a color. It's going to be too opaque. I want to keep this transparency going. I'm going to, I think I'm going to paint over the word. I can always bring it back, but I want that incorporated a little bit more. And all of a sudden we just have a completely different page, a different story. This page feels calm and curious, right? All of a sudden, there's not all the, the, the chaos that was there before of the background. And yet, none of that work of the background is lost or forgotten. I 
and simply that one step of adding some black really helped me shift directions and get a sense of where I wanted this piece to go. So when you're feeling stuck on the page and you want to go next, one little bit of paint, one shift in color, usually black or white, is sometimes like all it takes, right? Is sometimes all it takes. I'm bringing back even a little bit more of that. I love the, the word is now blue, but I can still see the word kind of sneaking in there. And now I can make decisions about where to go next because I can see clearly where the, the focal point of the story is, right? The focal point of the story is this curious little girl peeking around a corner. I'm just going to bring a little bit of that blue sort of down into the, the bottom here. So again, you know, just bringing colors in in different places. All of a sudden, again, that story feels more cohesive. And, you know, more might happen to this, or it might not. It doesn't really matter where this page goes next. Right now, this is, to me, a very interesting sort of curious page. But when I'm looking at it, I can also see the, the subtlety from this stamp pattern of these leaves. And it feels like, again, you know, trees are an important symbol and element that I'm often working with and so wondering if there needs to be some kind of a tree of discovery growing up in here or if I want to even you know bring this stamp back to the surface. I didn't put a lot of paint on here so I don't know if it's even going to be enough but it'll give me an idea, and if not, we're just going to paint over it again. So again, it's just the, the subtlety that, like, this piece feels like somehow this very sort of subtle, subtle piece that wants to come to the foreground here. And maybe we're going to add a few of those subtle little leaves. So that one needed a little bit more paint, but... Yeah, definitely curiosity, discovery, what's around the corner, just being open, right? So she's kind of, she's both timid and curious. I love the little look on her face. There's both timidity and curiosity there. All right, I'm going to make myself be a little bit more bold with the black. Because it's the, there's something about the sense of mystery of what's around the corner that feels important to our little character, right? And do you remember being a kid and sort of, you know, watching from the, the corners and, and like the little hidden places? Wondering what other people were up to. All right, we're just going to darken that up. Okay, that's creating some interesting mystery. I may let this get dry and then come back over it with the blue one more time, but somehow it just uh, just needed a little bit more of the of the mystery here. needs a leaf going that way up there. So, okay, so again, curiosity, wonder. I want those leaves to feel like they're coming out of the arch down here. Let's see if we can just kind of continue. All right, that feels better. Like we have just some fun, interesting 
mystery happening. We're not sure what's going on. It's a little bit scary, a little bit magical. All right, now we're getting somewhere. Okay, I love that. Yep, and then so I'm going to let that get nice and dry. And then I will maybe come in with one more layer, I'm not sure, of the blue over the top of that, but it needed, it felt like it needed the, it needed the texture there. Definitely, it's something about the mystery of it. I just loved the little look on her face. So that one feels really good, feels really interesting. And knowing that this is going to be on the, the page be, beside it, right? Like there's some definitely some inner child themes starting to pop up here, right? Uh, this one is going to be sort of bright and playful. This one is interestingly a little bit moody. But again, when we feel stuck on the page, all we need to do is make one mark, add one color, shift one image, paint out one area. It can help us get unstuck and move through the messy middle of a piece to the calm and cohesive story on the other side. As always, thank you for joining me. I'm Dr. Minette Riordan. This is Painting in Your PJs live with Minette. I will be back on Friday morning, which I think is June 30th, if I have my dates right, at 8 a.m. Mountain Time. I will not be here tomorrow. Have a beautiful rest of your day. Thanks, everyone, and I look forward to seeing you all soon. Bye-bye.